Hey, 678ers, pumped that you're watching this video. Here's, here's what we're gonna do. If you remember, a couple months ago in small groups, we did a series called Questions. Or during the series, through all the weeks, we gave you guys opportunities to write down some questions that you had that one day those questions would get answered. Today's the day. So here's how we're gonna do it. I've got some chicken wings and I got some sauce here. Now you asked some really good questions, some of them pretty challenging. And so what we're gonna do is for each question that I answer, I'm gonna eat a chicken wing, I'm gonna dip it in some sauce. But the harder that the questions get, the spicier that the sauce gets. Just to give you some context, I normally stay on honey barbecue below mild side of these sauces. So you're gonna see some tears. You might see some projectile vomit. We're all in for a show here. These wings brought to us by Roosters. We have some 678 family, Pat and Anita, who work there and uh, can hook us up with this. Probably, we should probably just start, right? Question number one. Why are there so many different churches? Yeah? Good question. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That's gonna help. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm a nerd. I'm gonna give you a lot of information, some of which you might not want, all of which you need. This is actually kind of tasty. There are two reasons why there are a bunch of different types of churches. One of them is this thing called doct. That sounds confusing, let me explain. You know how people can go to school and get a degree and then go back to school and get like a master's degree and then go back to school and then get like their doctorate. That's because if you have a lot of knowledge or information, you get this doctorate and the word doctrine kind of means the things that we all believe, the knowledge that we all have about God and how God works and how we interact with God. So that's doctrine. And a lot of churches have very similar doctrine, but some churches have different doctrine, different beliefs about God and how God works and how we interact with God. And so that's one reason why there would be different churches. Another thing is this weird word called dogma. I don't know why it's called that, but that's this idea of like, we like to do traditional things differently like maybe the way we baptize people or certain things that we like to do when people get married or when people die and things like that and so different traditions that some churches have and different beliefs that some churches have are why we have different types of churches all okay. right second question yep oh it's thick oh i already know i don't like it how do we know that we can trust the bible <sighs> oh gosh this is gonna be bad this is number two okay so here's what we know about the Bible. Oh my gosh. We have a lot of very, very, very old writings of the Bible, and we have tons of them, and here's why. When they were translating and copying down the books of the Bible, it wasn't like one person would write down a book and give it to somebody else, who would write down a book, who would give it to somebody else. Right? They would literally have like 20 people sit down at one time, write down all the exact same things read it over multiple times to make sure that everything that was written exactly copies what was originally written in the original text that they had of scripture. And they would take those copies and they would make like 20 copies of each one of those copies. And that's why we have like hundreds and hundreds of very, very, very old copies that all say exactly the same thing, which is why we know that we can trust scripture. Every part of me is saying, don't do this. <laughs> okay. Third question is, oh my gosh, who yep. created God? That's a very good question. Okay. All the time, when we talk about God, in the beginning, God created. Oh, I'm dying. A lot of people ask the question, when was God's beginning? How, how did God begin? Who created God? Oh gosh. I'm dying. But this is gonna be difficult, it's gonna be difficult to understand, so I'm gonna to try to explain it clearly while I try not to die. In the beginning, there was just God. So nothing else existed, there was no other thing, it was just God, and God existed. And then God created, and when God created, God created beginnings. So God existed before the beginning, does that make sense? So we think things have to begin, because we're so used to everything having a beginning, but before beginnings began, God was. It's super confusing. But it's why in Exodus, when God was talking to Moses, and Moses asked for the name that he could use to give to the people to show that it really was God who sent him, the name that God used was Yahweh, which literally means I am, which was this idea that God always has been, always is, and always will be, which means God has always existed, never had a beginning. In fact, God created beginnings. Maybe we'll give you a little spoonful. Oh, Go you're, for you're it. I'll be I'm gonna, I'm, No, no, no. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm a freaking champ. What are these seeds? Are these pepper seeds? Oh, yes. Yeah, those are pepper seeds. That's the spicy part of the sauce. All right, go for it. Uh, 
doesn't seem so bad right now. I'm ready for the question. Okay. Fourth question is, how do we know that God hears our prayers? Oh my gosh, it's getting worse. If this one builds. When you have a question about God and how God interacts with people, one of the best things that you can do, oh gosh, this one's getting stronger, Oh, is watch how God has interacted with other people in the past. There's a story that you can read. It's also an exodus with God and Moses, where God is super angry because there were these people that God had just led out of captivity. They were, ah, they were slaves. And God brought them into freedom, and he's taken them to a promised land. And they just complain, and they don't trust God, and they don't have faith, and they start worshiping an idol, and God's like, that's it, I'm done, I'm going to destroy these people and start new. And Moses actually has a conversation with God, which is what prayer is, a conversation with God, and says, no, don't do that, give him another chance, give him grace, please, for me, for me, please give him another chance. And God heard Moses, had that conversation with Moses, and then answered Moses' prayer by giving those people a second chance. You can also see really awesome stories in Scripture where people pray that the sun wouldn't set, and it doesn't. Or people pray that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain for like a year, and they prayed again, and it would rain. So you can see instances in Scripture where people go to God in faith and in prayer, and God hears those prayers and then does the thing that they're asking him to do. All right, I'm going to recommend that you put your glove on now if you're going into those next two. You know how your hands feel when you mow the lawn? When you're done, like that vibrating? My tongue's doing that. I don't know if it should. It's all you. <laughs> What, what sauce is that? This is donkey. Donkey! 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 Made with real Concentrated donkey. pepper. <laughs> Come on. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yep. No. No. Uh... Fifth question, why did God... <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <coughs> why did God create Satan? Such a good question. I get asked that all the time. There's some things that we should know about God. Some words that we use when we describe him. One of the words that we use is a word that's omniscient. It's this word like omni, which means all. It's like shint, which is like science, which is like all knowing, has all knowledge. God has all knowledge. I'm dying right now, currently. I'm dying. So it didn't surprise God. What well, Satan did didn't surprise God, didn't fool God or anything. God, God knew, but God still created Satan. So why would God go ahead and do something like that? Well, God didn't create robots who had to follow him. Gosh, God created people, God created angels that had the ability to choose to follow him or to choose to become an enemy to him. And that's what Satan did. Now, I would say this. He did that, and that's brought sin to the world. And we have a lot of things that happen in our world now, like death and disease and, and war and natural disasters that wouldn't have happened and those things are, are terrible and we would say why would god allow those things to happen and the truth is i can't give you a great answer other than the fact that that wasn't god's original design but i will say this if you read the book of revelations which is the very last book of the bible that can sometimes be confusing but gives us really good information about heaven and god working and god's plan and all those things you see that there is one characteristic of god the angels are, are kind of repeating over and over again and it's holy 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 one well, groups this year we talked about holy means set apart and to be set apart to be different you have to be set apart from something so i would argue that there being sin in the world and there being disasters and war and hatred and all this stuff uh all this darkness and all, all this bad stuff actually makes us understand god's holiness understand that god is set apart understand god's perfection even more so so i would say all this stuff being here and satan being allowed to deceive us and tempt us and making this world hard and painful actually gives god more glory because we're more able to see that he's holy i hate this one more last one and this is spicier than that one yes straight like <coughs> Ghost pepper extract mixed uh -huh. with a bunch of other stuff. I was hoping it was going to be ghost pepper. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Do it. <coughs> okay, what's the question? Why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah. That's another question I get all the time. Oh my gosh. So we talked earlier. I'm gonna die. About how there's sin in the world. And there's a lot of things now that happen. Oh gosh. That are outside of God's original plan and design. Oh. So God didn't intend for war or death or like hatred or any of those things. But they happen because sin entered the world. <clears throat> And so now the world's broken, and so it doesn't act the way that it was originally designed 
to act. I would also say that if we're a believer, bad things can happen to us because we live life with an enemy. Right? We, we have Satan who doesn't want us to live for God, who doesn't want our life to be easy and wants us to be upset or angry with God or ultimately doesn't want us to think that God exists at all and will do things to try to make our lives difficult. <laughs> Gosh. So that we would lose faith in God or we would choose not to follow God. A, a good example of that is the whole book of Job, if you want to read that for any kind of reference to see. Sometimes bad things can happen to good people, but that doesn't mean that God's not there and that God's not for you or that God can't work in that situation. That's what I got. Give me the ice cream. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. <coughs> Keep watching. The next video coming out is going to be our team in color for mix. So stay tuned, check out what that's gonna be.